man, I know you could go out there and say it's Mike Smith's fault and Mike Smith is a bad goalie and Mike Smith this and Mike Smith that and Mike Smith is not good enough and how the heck did the Oilers get to this point with Mike Smith as their guy? But that would be a little bit short-sighted, right? I think we can all acknowledge that Mike Smith, for all intents and purposes, has had a good Stanley Cup playoffs, despite the few blunders and very bad goals he has let up here and there throughout the way. But in this game, too, against the Colorado Avalanche, the Edmonton Oilers really did not go out there and perform for their goalie against a backup, and as a result, they're down 2 nothing in the series. Game two is a 4 to nothing score for the Colorado Avalanche, and based off of how we had seen both of these teams play here today, I think really the conversation of defender versus pretender really starts to bring itself up as to whether or not the Oilers, when under pressure, are that team. Now, I have to say this just to combat some of the comments that I know are going to come. Lego, you went out there and you smack-talked the Oilers so much in the LA series. You said after the first game that Philippe Deneau just completely shut the game down after they lost out on Nurse before Game 6 down 3-2 in the series. You said they were screwed and you had all these bad things to say. What are you going out there and saying the same thing about the Oilers here today? You know, I'll say the contrary. If the Oilers find a way to come back and beat the Colorado Avalanche and go to the Stanley Cup freaking finals, then wow, we're going to have to have some really intricate and deep discussions as to why they were able to do that. It's just based off of how the series has gone so far, I don't know if that's a likely possibility anymore. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'll say I'm wrong, but for now, I don't really know what else to feel. This game was one where after the first period it was 0-0, zero to zero, but it really was a showcase of Mike Smith being the best player for the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers just could not get any defense in front of this guy, and you take a look at all the opportunities the Colorado Avalanche got, especially after the 10-minute mark, and Mike Smith had to make some brilliant stops on partial breakaways and two-on-ones and everything, extended zone time by the Avalanche, the Oilers just got shoved around in the Colorado zone. They were forced to the perimeter, and that's a lot of why Pavel Franco's, or is it Franco's? I'm actually not too sure. Man, I was hearing it the entire broadcast. I've just been so used to calling him Pavel Franco's, which I guess is wrong now. But either way, the backup goaltender, who is not Darcy Kemper, came in here. He faced a lot of shots from the outside. He only had to make a few really fantastic stops, and they came early on in the game. After the first period, the Oilers just didn't really do much, and... It's kind of funny just to see how good this team has been in all situations throughout the playoffs when it comes to just forcing offense. McDavid drives out of there, just going to skate circles around your guys. They're going to confuse your defenders, which is going to open up lanes for their teammates to come in and find those passing lanes for the backdoor tap-ins. It happens all the time. It's just for Colorado with a pairing like Devon Taves and Kale McCarr, two very mobile, fluid skating defensemen, you have a Connor McDavid that is rendered useless compared to how effective he had been in previous games. Leon Dreisaitl is still on one foot, so there you go. And also, they talked about this on the broadcast, but all the goals in the second period, the three straight goals that happened in two minutes, pretty much, a lot of these goals were self-inflicted wounds by the Oilers. The first goal, Arturi Lekkinen, by the way, absolute legend there, Arturi Lekkinen, thank you for Justin Barron from the Montreal Canadiens fanbase, it's an Edmonton team that just absolutely scrambles in their own zone. They cannot control the puck. There are too many Edmonton players all clogged into one, like, three-meter radius on the ice, and eventually the puck escapes out to Nazem Kadri, who just shoots it and it tips down. Lekkonen gets it to go under the glove of Mike Smith. Fifteen seconds later, hey, guess what? It's another Euler turnover where they're behind their own goal line and they lose possession of the puck. Kadri gets a touch on, and eventually it's passed over to Manson at the point, who blasts one home. It's 2-0 with 15 seconds worth of game time, and eventually the Oilers take a timeout, but it doesn't really matter, because the Oilers on a bad change immediately on the next shift get a Nazem Kadri cross-crease special to Miko Ranton, and Kadri gets two assists and a goal. I almost said two goals and an assist. Two assists and a goal. Three total points in the span of two minutes. Talk about the one that got away, eh? We might have to make a video about that soon if the series continues shaping in Nazem Kadri's favor. 
But throughout the second period and the third, the Oilers, man, they just didn't get anything done. What's happening? Connor McDavid was the X factor here. And I think there were a lot of analytical models and people in the athletic and other parts of hockey media that were saying that Connor McDavid's contribution to the team and just the magnitude of what he is doing is so above and beyond good that if the Oilers can just play regular Oilers hockey and you still get the Connor McDavid being Connor McDavid, they have a legit chance to win. And I said Oilers in seven because I believed that he was going to be able to go out there and do that. But so far, I mean, okay, he had three points in game one, but you lost 8-6. So it's not really the best result you could have asked for. Game two here, Devon Taves and McCarr just got his number. I don't know what else to say. Now, a series isn't over after only two games. I know that, but... There's going to need to be some serious adjustments made by the Oilers and their break-in and their setups in the offensive zone, not to mention the discipline because the penalties they took in the early first period definitely were not good penalties to take. I mean, Leon Dreisaitl with the chop, you have Brett Kulak with the elbow, not good penalties. They set the tone for the rest of the game. Mike Smith also getting really unlucky on the fourth goal where he doesn't have his glove on properly, but it doesn't really matter. It was 3 nothing already and the other goalie, the backup, Franco's or Franco's Frankie, as the crowd was calling him, gets the shutout. So good for him. It's a 2-0 series lead for the Colorado Avalanche. The better team absolutely won here, and that's just the unfortunate thing to say when you're going up against Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, who have been as good as they have been this entire postseason run. You know, I like goals, and I wanted to see more goals, but if it's Pavel Franco's who's going to be going out there getting shutouts, ah, man... That really does take away a good part of the entertainment value for me as a hockey fan. I know I kind of am sort of cheering for the Oilers because I had them go into the finals against Colorado in this matchup in seven games, but seriously, Connor McDavid deserves better. This is a guy that has been the best player on earth for years now, and seeing him go down like this without even a resemblance of a fight from the rest of his team doesn't feel good. So talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about the Oilers and the Avalanche game Two. It is a 2-0 series lead for the Colorado Avalanche. It is a shutout on the Oilers. It's the second time they've gotten shut out this entire postseason. The first time, oddly enough, was also 4 nothing against the LA Kings in the first round. So there you go. There are the demons of LA coming back to haunt us in this conversation here. But let me know in the comments all your thoughts about what these two teams are going to be doing next game. For Colorado, they just need to do what they did tonight and replicate that in Edmonton in Game 3. Now, it's a tough building to play in, that Rogers place in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. The fans are rowdy, the fans are ruthless, and they're going to give it to you. But when it comes to the Oilers, I do think they have a lot more they need to improve on for Games 3, 4... Hopefully a 5 and a 6, and maybe a 7 if everything goes the way I thought it would. But talk to me in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.